What's going on, YouTube? FG3000 back in the place to be. And the place to be right now, playing a little bit of scrolls, showing you the basics of the growth deck. Let's get started. Now, here is the battlefield. This is where all the magic happens, so to speak. And these tiles represent where you can put creatures. As you can see, the uh, computer has gone ahead, put a creature down here like a jerk, getting ahead of me. But don't worry, he'll get his in a minute. Now, behind your tiles, you have these idols. All these idols have 10 HP apiece. Now, in order to win the game, you have to defeat at least three of these idols, bringing them down to zero. Pretty straightforward. So, how do you do that? Well, using creatures and spells, of course. Now, if you look down here at the bottom of my screen here, here's my hand. Now, all these cards have varying levels of resources that, that are required to summon them. Um, you see one, two, one, 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 and four. Now, I actually don't have any resources right now, and I'll show you how you actually gain them. So, best thing to do here, let's take a look at what we have. So, we're going to go ahead and sacrifice this card. So, this game is a little bit different than other trading card games, is that there are no resource cards in the game. There are no land cards. So, in order to actually gain resources, you actually have to sacrifice their actual normal playing cards. Each one of the cards that you sacrifice is good for one resource. So I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice my Illthorn Seed. Basically what this does, if I put it on a unit, when that unit is destroyed, it puts a thorny, a thorny wall where it was. I don't really need that right now because I have no creatures. So let's go ahead and sacrifice this one. You click this, you click that button there, and down here at the bottom left-hand corner, as you can see, now I have one resource. Now what I'm going to do... Since this thing right here requires three turns before it can do anything, I'm just going to summon my Ragged Wolf, who is a 1-2 creature, but he has haste. He does have a 2 cooldown, but the very first turn he comes out, he'll be able to attack immediately. So I'll go ahead and do that. That'll bring down his crossbow band to 1 life. Now this game is a little bit different than other trading card games, once again, that the life does not come back automatically. It doesn't regenerate when the turn's up. So he's down to 1 permanently, unless he has a spell to heal himself with. Now, he's just summoned one of these little guys. Basically, when their cooldown goes to zero, they have a choice to make. They can either do a normal attack for one damage, or they can sacrifice themselves and do two damage to a target enemy unit. So, if he decides to do that, he can basically kill my wolf flat out. So, kind of a jerk move, but no big deal. So, let's see what we want to do here. So, I have a couple of different options here. I can either summon these Vaders of the Wild. These are a 1-1 one -one creature, and when they come into play, they give me an additional growth which is a good move. Um, that'll also kind of give this, this This also kind of make the computer make a decision. Is he going to kill one of my wolves? Is he going to kill one of my vaders? Chances are he's probably going to kill one of these guys because they give me growth. So let's do something a little different here. I'm not too worried about them moving around, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice my binding root enchantment. Basically what this does is it roots the enemy in place, um, decreases movement by one, Every, every creature in the game so far only has a one movement, so that means they can only move one tile. So if you move, decrease it by one, they can't move at all. Um, but I'm not really too worried about that right now, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice that. Get me one more growth. Um, and let's see. Next turn, I'll be able to kill that guy, so I'll let him just sit tight there. And let's go ahead and summon two of these Vaders of the Wild here. I'll put one up here in the upper left and one down, or yeah, one up there in the upper left and one down here in the lower left. And I'll go ahead and end my turn. So as you can see, as these guys came out, I now have four resources, thanks to those guys providing me with two. All right, so let's see what we got to do here. So the computer here, as you can see on the on this side of the screen, when you see the glowing tiles under their enemy, that means that they will be able to attack next turn. So now I need to be wary of this guy being able to either sacrifice or attack me for one, and this guy being able to hit me with four. I'm not too worried about this guy because I'm going to attack him with my wolf and kill him. So this guy, this is a wash. Not worried about him at all. Um, but I'm not sure which one of the. I'm not sure what he's going to do with this guy. He can either move him down a tile to attack, or just sacrifice himself and kill one of these guys. So regardless of the fact, I'm going to lose one of the. I'm going I'm to lose somebody off of the field. This guy pretty much has free reign to kill somebody. There's nothing I can really do about it. Um, but I say there's nothing I can do about it. There, there actually is something I can do about it. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and put the bear paw here. And basically what this enchantment does, it, it gives my uh, unit a plus two attack and plus two health. 
but it also increases his countdown by one, which is not that big of a deal. So what this does here, so he can't just walk down here and attack him and kill him. The only way this guy is going to be able to kill somebody is if, if he sacrifices himself. So I, I'm willing to take that swap. Um, and then I'm also going to go ahead and sacrifice this spell called Rallying. All units you control have their countdown decreased by two. Um, very, very good card, but I don't really need it just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice it. And let's see what other two cards I can get. That's actually a pretty good one. Mm hmm. All right. I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'll show you what this card is. Basically, what this does is it gives you plus one attack and plus three health, and it decreases your movement by one. So once I put this on a creature, it's not going to be able to move anymore. But I'm actually okay with that, because what that does is it kind of solidifies these two guys. They can't be killed flat out with this guy anymore. And so that keeps those two growth spells that these guys are giving me, they keeps them safe. So we'll take that. Let's go ahead and end our turn. This guy is going to kill that crossbowman. And what, what are you going to do, buddy? So he sacrificed himself and killed, killed that wolf, which is fine. I'm okay with that trade. So he summoned a royal infantryman. And all creatures that you control in the same row gain plus one health. And that's just for him, obviously. And he's a one-two creature with a two countdown. So let's see here. What, what would he like to do? What would we like to do? Um... I'm going to go ahead and summon another one of these Vaders, I think. I'm going to move him forward here. Move this Vader back here, which gives him a nice little buffer. And what I'll also do... Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, let's go ahead and summon Frostbeard here. Frostbeard, this guy is very, very powerful. He's a 6-1, but he has a 3 countdown, so it's going to take him 3 turns before he can actually do any attacks. Being that he only has one HP, that puts him in danger pretty much right off the bat. Um, but if he's killed, all my units gain plus two to the end of turn. So depending on what how it uh, what turn he dies on, that might be really really good for me. Um, so let's go ahead and put this guy out. We'll place him right there, um, and we'll go ahead and end our turn. So this guy's gonna do two damage to that idol, bring it down to eight. The computer's gonna summon a obelisk there which is a zero five wall it's a structure so it can't move so it just stuck right there great defense though all right from this point let's see what else would we like to do so this guy's gonna hit me with one i'm pretty okay with that i'm probably just gonna let that go through um and i'm gonna go ahead and summon my brother of the wolf put him in front of my frost beard there and then I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this. Since I'm not in any real danger right now, I have way more creatures than my opponent does. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice that guy to get some more growth for later. And we'll go ahead and attack this guy for three, bringing him down to seven. Let's see what the computer does here. So let's take a look here. Slow down, computer, slow down. <laughs> so he, he uh, casted a spell called Focus, which gave one of his attacking units plus three until end of turn. Um, so instead of taking one, I actually took four. Um, still not that big of a deal. I'm fine with that. All right. So this turn, I have two people that are attacking. I have this guy up here attacking for two. I'm just going to let him go do his thing. And I got this guy attacking here for one. And I have this spell called Binding Root again, which basically, once again, um, this decreases movement by one, which is basically a root. So I'm going to sacrifice this card. Let's get two more. This is actually really good. Yeah, this is going to work out just fine. Okay. I'm going to put this bear paw on this card here. Once again, that makes him, that gives him plus two, plus two. So now he's a three, three creature. Um, and that keeps these guys safe. Because like I said, if I lose these guys, I lose three land, which will cripple me at this point. Um, so I'm, I want to keep those guys as safe as possible. Um, also, since this guy's attacking, I'm going to go ahead and give him my champion ring. And this champion ring gives this unit a plus two attack. So put that on him in my turn. That'll do four damage to that idol there. So looking pretty decent. All right, my turn again. Um, as you can see, these two guys are glowing here. So I have to be on the lookout. These guys will attack next turn since they're glowing. So that's two damage that I have to be on the lookout for. And my idol only has six left. But I'm actually okay with that, because um, I'm about to do some major damage here at the bottom. Six. Let's go ahead and sacrifice this Ragged Wolf, since it's only a one creature. 
Let's see if we can get something better. Much better. Let's cast this. Let me show you what that did. I'm sorry about that. Eye of the Eagle. Basically, this takes the next creature scroll from my library and adds it to my hand. And what that added was a Wildling, which at this point is not as good. I'll show you what it does. It's a 0-4 creature. And every time I summon something adjacent to it, it takes one damage, but then it gets a permanent increase of one attack power. So if you line up all your cards right, this is actually a really, really good card. But I have so many of my creatures out already that it's going to be kind of hard for me to do that. So instead, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we can kill that in one shot. And this is six, seven. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cast a spell called Crimson Bull. All units you control gain plus two attack until end of turn. So I have four creatures attacking this turn. This is the, probably the best time to use it. So I'll go ahead and cast that in my turn. That'll basically one shot, well not one shot, it'll two shot this idol and this idol will also go down. So that's two idols down, just gain 20 gold pieces. Let's see what the computer comes back here with. So they're gonna summon a Royal Vanguard here. I'm gonna get attacked, not that big of a deal. Royal Vanguard, this is another great card. It's a 3-5 three, a three, creature and anybody that's adjacent to it when it's about to attack gets a plus two attack. So this is really, really good. So if this guy was just about to attack this turn, these two guys would also get plus two. So that's, you, you got to be real, real careful with those two guys. All right. However, I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice my wildling here. Like I said, it, it came too late for it to be of real use to me at this point. And I can kill him without that bonus. I'm going to go ahead and let this guy attack this one. That'll kill him. And then what we'll do... We'll save our cards for now. Yeah, let's go ahead and save our cards for now. Let's see what's going to happen here. Um, I don't want to sacrifice anything right now. And I don't want to... Well, I've already sacrificed something. I don't want to cast anything just yet. So let's go ahead and end our turn. Kill this guy. Let's see what the computer comes back with here. Ah, they're going to do this spell called Kabonk. Deal one damage to a target unit and draw one scroll. What a cheap move. All right. Ah, I made, I made a little tactical error there, but that's not, that's not going to be too big of a deal. So let's see. So what I, what I'll tell you my mistake here. These two guys here had one turn left last turn. So what I should have did, I should have started moving them up here. That way, when this turn would have came, they would have been right here in this tile, which will allow me to attack this thing even more powerful. So that was a tactical error on my side. But actually, what I, re what I really want to do is just show you guys how uh, moving the tiles work, really. I actually knew exactly what I was doing the entire time. Um, all right, so let's move this guy here as well. Because like I said, fighting these things is, is worthless now. They're already dead. There's no point in me attacking these things at all. So this thing has 10 there. Um, all right, so let's do this. So let's go ahead and binding root this guy right here. So that'll keep him in this lane forever. Um, this tile is probably going to go down and I'm okay with it because once it goes down, he won't be able to move around anymore. So I I'm, I'm okay with that trade off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and buff this guy up with my ring there. Um, I was going to save this card, but I, I'm not going to need any more because this idol is about to die. So it's kind of a waste, but I'll show you what it does. For each unit you control, heal your idol on the same row by one. Beast creatures deal double damage to idols this turn. So this is a great card because if I had three creatures on this row right here, I could cast that and this would regenerate my idol by three points. So really good card, but I'm not going to need any more because I'm, I'm willing to let this one go. Um, let's sacrifice this. Let's get two more cards. And... Oh, you're going to be able to kill that next turn anyway. So no matter what, this is going to be a GG. So let's go ahead and cast this Eye of the Eagle. Let's see what kind of creature card we get. We get a Great Wolf, which is a great card. It's a 3-5 with a 2 cooldown for every Great Wolf that we have. Um, for every Great Wolf, uh, Great Wolf gets one attack for every Wolf that you control. Um, it also has a Relentless ability, which is awesome. Um, if this creature attacks and destroys a creature, it, de it deals the remaining of its damage to the next creature and the next creature. So it's kind of like Trample if you played Magic the Gathering. But we're probably not going to be able to play that one because, like I said, this is going to be a GG next turn regardless. So um, let's go ahead and just end it out with this wall here. Um, this is a 0-3 creature with haste. 
when it comes out it heals all my friendly units by one um so we'll go ahead and play that right there doesn't i don't really need the heal but i'll take the protection so this guy can't just get a free reign in my idol there um and we'll go ahead and end our turn all right this guy is going to cast Frostwind, which is a great spell. Delaying the Inevitable, computer. Delaying the Inevitable. So Frostwind, what that does is it adds a plus one countdown to a, a target unit and all adjacent units. So now, this was going to be a GG last turn, but he added an extra turn to this guy. So I can't attack with him this turn. Can't attack with anybody at all whatsoever. So, doesn't really matter too much, but... Let's go ahead and move this guy up here this time. So that way, when their turn comes up, they'll be able to attack this idol and take it out. This guy will be able to attack that idol and take it out as well. Um, just in case something funny does happen, let's go ahead and put a Great Wolf there as a buffer. Um, and we'll go ahead and sacrifice this. Let's see what else we get. Nothing really. And we'll go ahead and end our turn. Probably not going to be able to do anything that turn. Didn't think he would. All right, so this is basically GG. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get both these idols down in one shot, which we will. Uh, we'll go ahead and cast our Crimson Bull. All units you control gain plus two and uh, plus two attack until end of turn. We'll cast that. Everybody gets beast mode. Let's just do it again, just for giggles. Everybody gets beast mode again. Um, let's just sacrifice this. See what else we get. And why not? We'll grab a ragged wolf, put him there too. <laughs> he has haste, so he'll be able to attack in the turn and that'll take care of that idol and that'll take care of that idol and that's pretty much all there is to it guys um this is the victory screen right here as you can see just for winning i got 83 gold completion is another 20 since i killed four idols i get 10 gold apiece. so for this one battle here i got 143 gold so let's leave the match and show you what you can use your hard-earned gold for so go into the store here there's a couple of different options as you can see, there's a gold here. I have 403 gold, and then I have zero shards right now. Um, this is the actual real world currency. Um, this is what you actually spend real life cash on, but it, there's nothing in here that's pay to win whatsoever. You, you can't even really use this to get a lot of cards at all, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Um, so let's go ahead and spend some gold here. So what you can do, there's a couple of different options. You can buy a random scroll for 100. You can buy a scroll pack for 1,000. And basically what that gives you is 10 scrolls and you're guaranteed guaranteed to get two uncommon and one rare so that's pretty good uh, or what you can do let's say because right now i'm kind of concentrating on my growth deck instead of just buying a random scroll i can pay a little extra and guarantee that i get a growth scroll so let's do that so let's buy one of these got another mangy wolf which is a two three creature um, when this attacks it gains a life um, and it also when it comes out it decreases the countdown of all other wolves in play so that's pretty good and let's see what else we get here. And another Ragged Wolf. This is kind of meh. This is a common card. This is that 1-2 Haste Wolf. Not that big of a deal. Um, but what you can do also is, let's say you get a bunch of cards that you already have a, a bunch of, like this Bear Paw. You can only use three cards per deck. So me having more than three Bear Paws is kind of a waste. So I can just go ahead and sell that, and the shopkeeper will give me 25 gold. And you can kind of keep doing that. You can keep buying scrolls, keep selling them, keep buying them, keep selling them, and kind of go on and on that way. Um, also in the store, let's take a look. You can also buy, um, these are basically kind of scrolls of the week. Every week, your specific account will get some randomized scrolls that you can buy. Now, this is a lot better in a couple of different ways. So it's not random. You see exactly what you can get. All these right here are random. You never know exactly which scroll that you're going to get. But at least when you go down here, you can buy one and you can only do it one time. Buy one for 100 gold, and you know exactly which cards you're going to get. Or you can turn around and use uh, some of these shards, which is the real-life currency. Um, you can use 25 shards to buy this. This is the only thing that you can really buy as far as pure cards um, using real-life cash so far. That and the starter decks is the only thing that you can really use cash on as far as cards go. Um, and these change every single week, and you can see there's varying different costs. There's 100, 500, and all the way up to 1,000 for some of the more rare cards. Um, so this is a very cool way to kind of fill out your deck or to buy some of these cards right here, like this Iron Iron Ogre for a 1000 Maybe I buy this and try to trade it to somebody else and get something else. So pretty cool aspect like that. I like how they did this. Um, here are the starter decks that I was just talking about. These cost 6,500 gold. They're quite, quite a bit. 
Um, when you start the game, you get to pick one for free. Um, I picked the growth deck, as you know. Um, you can also buy you can buy these starter decks with real life cash, like we talked about. And then, last but not least, the only thing left in the uh, in the cash shop is these avatars, which once again you can buy with gold if you want to, or you can use your real life cash and buy these little avatars. And the, the neat thing about these avatars, and I'll show you. Let's go to my profile here. Edit avatar. Those skins that you just saw, they they're basically they're basically like kits. <laughs> so you can take um, aspects of all those avatars and change up the avatar that you have using their items and equipment. You can change heads and all that good stuff. You can change their legs or you can change their entire set. That's the the other guy that I have that came for free. Um, but you can also change your legs and whatnot. So pretty cool. I mean, something to spend your gold on after you've gotten to a you know to the point where you don't need any more cars or if you just want to spend. Uh, some of your shards on things. Hello, lady. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that is scrolls in a nutshell. Um, later on this week, I'm going to be bringing you a couple of previews of the energy deck as well as the order deck. I want to play them. A, you know, I want to get really, really accustomed to them before I actually show you what they look like. I mean, I played 45 games of just the growth deck by itself before I even made this video. So I want to do kind of the same before I uh, dump, jump into the other videos because they're going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. My name is FG3000. That's been Scrolls. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm out.